Hello and welcome back to the Variant Geek Podcast. I'm Brennan. I'm Zach. Jason. Derulo. He. Hey guys. That's Michael that's that's Jackson. <laughs> God rest him. How, how's everybody doing? Um, I feel like death. I got. I just got my uh, second COVID shot yesterday, and yeah, you know how that. You both know how that went. Good old fever, night shakes, and whatnot. Uh, that was cool. That was awesome. Sounds awesome. It was, yeah, it was terrible. Jason, other than your clothes not drying. Vibing. My shoulder Vibin. hurts, but that's life. Zach. Uh, I'm doing okay. <laughs> <What the> heck, <laughs> Zach? Uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, rewatching Game of Thrones. I felt old re- I know. when you sent that clip over. I heard the music itself and I went, It's so long since I've seen the first... Because I only I've only seen every episode once. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess before we get into uh, the episode for today, uh, some recent news. Uh, I mean, we just watched Mortal Kombat. That was actually entertaining. Was I actually liked it a lot good. more than I thought I would. Mm-hmm. So did I. The finishers, though. Ooh. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. I loved I loved Kung Lao's finish. I love that I mentioned it, and then like five minutes later, it just. It happened, and I said, ooh, ooh. I'm not going to say what it was, because I don't want to spoil anything. Oh my god, it was so good. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it was, it was a surprisingly good movie. Um, other than that, oh god, recent news. Um, geez, I'm really blanking. I don't know why. I had a bunch of stuff. Mortal, not Mortal Kombat, Mass but, Effect. Oh, Mass, the Mass Effect. Your KOTOR. Remaster. Kotor. I will mention that in the next episode. But okay. that's supposed to be a week later. Pokemon Fine. Snap. <laughs> well, I will talk about this in the Star Wars episode. But they officially announced a remake of the first KOTOR. I don't know if it's the first one, but they've announced some kind of remake of They announced of the remake KOTOR. of the first one. Well, I don't know if it's the first one, but... They've announced some kind of remake of KOTOR, and I'm excited. Uh, hope It's probably not going to come out until 2022. I wouldn't be surprised... If it doesn't even come out until 2023, just because that's the game's 20th anniversary, but we'll see. Um, and then, yeah, Mass Effect Legendary Edition comes out in less than a month, so that's that's gonna be a lot of fun to play. But uh, all right, let's get on to the episode. And actually, speaking of Mass Effect, that kind of leads into it. We're gonna be talking about video game sequels, some of the best, some of the worst, and uh, some that are just kind of okay. They just kind of they're there. Uh, and I guess we'll start with Mass Effect 2, which was a phenomenal sequel. I've talked about it a lot in other episodes, but I mean, it's it's a phenomenal sequel, and it does, I think, everything right, and improves pretty much on everything that the first game did, and yeah, uh, what, what's a good video game? like Shadow I, of War, I know I literally talked about it um, last week, um, but... I really think it deserves, you know, since it's the, since that's what we're talking about, it deserves to be mentioned, because it, it took everything that was great already about the first game and it expanded upon it, made it that much better. Jason, in my opinion, is yes. There a, is there a video game sequel that you think was pretty good? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> and that's the episode. And that's Woo! the episode. Yeah. No. Um. Like. So I was, cause I don't know if you. I guess like sequels. Um, what like com- like a, an example of a bad? From what I've heard, you could probably elaborate on this more. Um, an example of a bad video game sequel is what Halo Four is to Halo Three. Like it made a, like like from what I've heard is it doesn't feel like the same game. You could tell a different company made it. You can tell it's yeah, not the same Master Chief and Cortana that we've had not before. The greatest thing ever. I mean, I still liked Halo Four enough, but I did not play. And even Halo Five, story wise, was pretty dog doo because they put out this. They like they they had this whole campaign of. Um, I don't know if you guys remembered seeing like the TV spots for it and whatnot. Like it was going to be a huge yeah. showdown between Locke and Chief, and it was going to be this huge catalyst uh, for the whole series. And then like. They beat each other up for like six seconds, and they're like, "All right, we're buddies." And it was like, "What? But where's the world-shattering event that you promised us?" 
That being said, the multiplayer was good, at least. So, like, I played I played the cr- living crap out of the Halo 5 multiplayer. But, yeah, Halo 4, as compared to Halo 3, was just abysmal. Halo 3 was the first one I played all the way through as a, as a youngin. And I still, like, every time, like, when you start the flood levels and the floods start jumping across, like, bridges and whatnot, I'm like, ah, I don't know. And it's just, it's... It's not a good comparison between 3 and 4. Sure, does 4 look a lot prettier than 3 did? Yeah. But that's about it. Literally about it. Because I think one thing that a sequel, like, for, in order for a sequel to be good, is it should build upon what um, the previous games have done and did well. Like, um, I was hearing that a lot of people for years and years have complained about the uh, Paper Mario combat system. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how for like three straight games, they've been like, yeah, we don't like this. This is not what we want because they're straying away from the roots of the, like the RPG kind of stuff and they just don't listen. And apparently, like you can speak more on this, but the combat is apparently not fun and not good. I mean, every single enemy that you face Unless you attack them first and you're strong enough to fight them, it shifts into like a turn-based, essentially, battle. Mm -hmm. And you have to, at least in the newest Origami King, you have to like solve a puzzle in order to attack them. And it is annoying and cumbersome when you're going through and every single enemy, you have to do it. And it takes like five minutes for each enemy. I mean, for bosses, it's pretty fun. But for the minions, it's tedious. And that was the only qualm I had for that game. It's like another game that, uh, another like kind of branching off of Mass Effect 2 um, with Bioware is they had Dragon Age Origins, which is a great game. Uh, you didn't have a voice protagonist, which was fine. It worked. And then with Dragon Age 2, they made the game like a lot worse. They Instead of having an open world to play in, you had a tiny little city to play in, like tiny little, um, little outskirts. You had the same dungeon design just replayed over and over and over again. The character models honestly actually looked worse in Dragon Age 2 especially the Darkspawn, than they did in the first one. And they gave it a voice protagonist because they're trying to bank off the success of Mass Effect 2 with the dialogue wheel and having kind of influences and relationships. And it backfired really, really hard. They, they kind of fixed it with Inquisition. Um, Inquisition I like seeing, wasn't bad. I like seeing stuff like that where like, it'll go from good game to bad game to good game. Like that happened with Dark Souls in my opinion. Dark Souls 1, good. Dark Souls 2, doo-doo. Dark Souls 3, good again. Yeah. Like, Dark Souls 2, from, to my, like, they just kind of, they're like, you know what? Let's just triple the amount of enemies. Let's just throw a crap ton of bosses in there, even if they're doggy doo-doo bosses, because there's, there's a decent chunk of bad bosses in there. Nah. Um, bad des- Whether it's bad design, or what they're just ridiculous. But it's like, the Ma- yeah, Magus and Congregation, um, the, uh... Honestly, Last Giant's not a very good boss. No, um, also, there's one that we never fought, um, but it's a gank boss. Um, but it's a, ju- instead of it being, like, in Dark Souls 1, um, and I know Sal- we might talk about this with Salvador if we do an episode on Dark Souls, but they, with, instead of separating the two, it's just a giant open area and it's impossible to break aggro from both of them. Yeah. Um, the stupid um, chariot boss. Yeah, the executioner's chariot. It's just it's dumb. It's dumb. I mean, you can beat it like that as long as you don't back off into a hole. You know, one time. It happens one time. and it, Yeah, that's fair. Or you don't, you know, your sword doesn't break. Yeah. Uh, So, I mean, there are ways to, like, I get experimenting, you know, but there are also times where you should 
if the formula is working, stick with it. Granted, with sports games, that is just dumb. You There's sure? a reason why Madden 21 has flopped so hard. I really love and like it was like Madden 20 or Madden 21 in the practice like the practice mode you could see they, Madden 19 or something like on yeah, the background the, it was like huh. they were literally too lazy to change stuff where you could literally see Madden 19 on one spot and Madden 20 just behind it. And it's like really I mean at this point like we've had the um, technology for at least a decade almost to update a game uh, while it's out so instead of you know putting out a new game every year you can just update the rosters no. like I, I don't see what's so difficult about it or update money. the game for like, well yeah money <laughs> that's literally it and the problem is, is like people complain about it but they still go out and buy the games every year that's what I did until this year first year in a long time I haven't actually bought a Madden game <clears throat> but overall I mean I remember if, seeing you rage playing Madden <laughs> that Madden is the game I've probably raged the most playing yeah Cap. I was there when you played Apex <laughs> I haven't broken controller <laughs> well I've almost broken a controller playing Apex I haven't broke. I've broken a controller playing Madden. Um, I'm glad that when I broke my controller in Apex, it was on purpose, though. I'd, that'd have been childish otherwise. Yeah. Because it was broken, and I said, "Fuck it," and snapped it in half. Oh. Well. Um. But I mean, yeah. Do you guys have any says on sequels? What are What are some of the, like, um, like is what? What do you think is the best Legend of Zelda sequel? I mean, Legend I... Zelda 2! <laughs> Hold on. Okay. I think, I mean, obviously, like, Breath of the Wild's an obvious, like, pick. Because it just is such a great and gorgeous game. But that's coming from me, and I haven't really played a whole lot of Legend of Zelda. So, I mean, that's more of a Jason question. I know Majora's Mask is widely held as a great one, Ocarina of Time. Yeah, I like Link's Awakening, the remaster that they did, because that's technically, it's, I mean, the first game. Have you ever played the first Legend mm -hmm. of Zelda game? I've seen a little bit of it. On the NES. On the NES. Yes, my, one of my teachers in high school brought the his, NES. His, uh, his SNES his into NES. school, and that was the first thing he bought, and he'd be like, yeah, you can play it, and I'm like, yeah. You went, yes. But. Um. To break this awkward silence. What? Uh, what? Awkward silence. Literally, we stopped talking and you said, um. That was the awkward silence. You were saying, um. um. The pro a problem that some games face, though, is that first game is so good that the expectations are almost impossible to meet for a sequel. Like, that's why Half-Life 3 will never happen. Because it will never happen. Live up to the you expectations. Half -life, half -life too? I haven't, but I've, ah, I know. Then how can you speak to that? I know they're held in really, really high regard, and everybody's just waiting and waiting and waiting. I mean, they'll never come out three. with a sequel because Val can't count to three. Well, yeah, but they're they're all, it, it'll also like even if they did come out with Half Life Three, it will never be good enough for a lot of people. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. No. Well, when you only have two fingers, one on each hand. How can you count to three? One, two, well, two, two again. And oh, that's else? why, like, uh, Breath of the Wild sequel might not be as. I mean, I have high hopes, and I think it will probably be a great game. But you know, it, it's it's dangerous because you mess up something and. The fans are gonna, especially Revolt. in this day and age and social media, they will riot. That's why, like, Last of Us Part Two was ripped, even though it's won so many Game of the Year nomination or awards. I don't know how, to be quite frank. Bonnie. Who's Frank? Who is Frank? But uh, the Last of Us Part Two uh, is an example that it, it, especially a lot of the characters, did not live up to the hype that some people built for it. 
And, I mean, that's just a thing of the industry. I mean, you're never going to appeal to everybody. But, uh, you guys want to say something? Because I've talked Destiny. a lot. Destiny. Destiny 2. Destiny. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I mean, from what I heard, I I played a little bit of Destiny <laughs> up <laughs> until <laughs> the, the video first. What do you guys have to say? I've talked a lot. What do you guys think on that? Well, see, I, I was asking Jason to see anybody. Have you even played him, Jason? I played Destiny 2. You played it with us a little bit, didn't you? Yeah. Thoughts? It is... Certainly a little shit. me King. I mean, it's... It's hey. it's a looter shooter. It's for grinding and grinding and grinding. Yeah. And I get tired of the grinding. That's fair. That's kind of why I stop with like Borderlands. Well, I like see. I like being stimulated. And so, <laughs> like when video games where it shifts from being like like doing something to just repeating the same action over and over yeah. and over and over and over and playing over. the same <coughs> strikes over and over again the same raids over and over again you just like this means nothing yeah this is it mario kart heck yeah the new maps are lit let me tell you what of course you've played them nerd i'll nerd. take you on a mario kart yeah. tourney right now you kick my butt I would, actually. It's all you do is play Mario Kart. Yeah, it's true. It's the only thing I've ever seen him play. Yep. I've never seen you play Apex. Not, not even once. <laughs> I can actively tell you that the only times I ever play Mario Kart are... All the time. Like... Every day. Every single day. No, oh, like... Day. Almost never. Um... I do what else? Why am I blanking so hard right now? I got mean, the brain fog. It's here. I, I didn't like KOTOR 2, personally. Really? I didn't. I really haven't played it all the way through. Just because after going in from straight from the first to the second, I was like, meh. I personally think that the second game is a lot better. Than the, it improves in a lot of ways, especially in character. It's a lot darker. Um, it has a, a lot of great um, dialogue. And it also expands on like the skill trees and the amount of stuff you can do. And like I like Narshada. It's a great planet. Uh, I I used to not really like it, but because it can be a little, especially if you don't have force speed, because there are some long distances you have to just slowly walk, slowly jog across. You mean you don't have a horse that you can ride? Nope. Um, and then, I mean, you go back to Corvan, uh, you go to Duxon, which is kind of cool, you have a lot of returning characters, so I mean, I, I personally think if you play it with the restored content mod, um, it's, better. it's, it's definitely a great game. I think one of, oh goodness, I really think one of the greatest sequels of all time is Halo 2, though. Um, to combat evolved, because Halo Two. Have either of you played it? Yes. Oh my goodness! So good. Uh, did you like play the whole game or me? Mm-hmm. No, no. It's like a couple levels. Fair enough. It was. Oh man, I just, I just, I remember being so much more engaged in the story of Halo Two than Combat Evolved, and. It was a lot more difficult to beat on. It's one of the hardest ones to beat on Legendary. Well, Captain Keys is dead. Uh, You didn't love finding him and going and not not giving (laughs) you nightmares? That was one of the greatest levels ever in video games. Like, because, um, like when I started playing, like, Halo 3 for I played Halo 3 first, and it was like, hmm. But then, um, I didn't beat it before I finally came as one I was like, can I please buy the other games? And so then I played Combat Evolved, not knowing what the flood was at all. And this was like before Twitch streaming was a big thing and like Let's Plays were a big thing, you know? So I start playing through Combat Evolved and I'm like, hmm, this is a pretty good game. And then you get to that level with the flood. Yeah. And you go to find them. And it's like, is this a horror game? <laughs> you go... 
I'm afraid. And it was terrifying. It, I, I really think it was one of the spoopiest moments I've had in a video game that's not supposed to be a scary game. Yeah. But then also, um, I think Red Dead 2. That's what I was going to... Which is, amazing. which is technically a sequel. Is it Red Dead 2 or is it Red Dead? Because Red Dead takes place after Red Dead oh 2. Oh my god. T okay, Red Dead 2, yeah, sure, it's a prequel of Red Dead, but I think of it still as the, necessarily the sequel. It came out second. There we go, done and done. It's a prequel, story-wise, nah. but it's better. Uh, a game that I actually completely forgot about. Um, Uncharted 2. I don't know if yeah. you guys have played it. No, a whole lot. Uh, it's actually, it's a lot of fun. It, it's really good. Uh, the voice acting is great. Um, that's, it's definitely held in high respects as one of, not only the greatest, like one of the greatest sequels of all time, but one of the greatest games of all time. Because I know a lot of people love the Uncharted games, which is why some people are not happy with the casting for the what? Uncharted movie with Mark Wahlberg as Sully. I don't know what you're talking about. And Tom Holland. I don't know what you're talking about. Every, who's oversaturated in everything as Nathan Drake. Instead of getting Nathan Fillion, who played him in the fan film and did a phenomenal job. He old now. He is old now. I mean, he is. Yeah, but I still think he would do a phenomenal job as Nathan Drake. Um... Something I'm 90% sure neither of you have played is Diablo 2. I might play it once the remaster comes Do it. out. Yeah, I think it's... I liked it better I watched my brother 3. play it. It's very good. It's another one of those, like, with Shadow of War, I think that it took... And it built off of an already pretty solid, like, base and made it better. Mm -hmm. um, like, the storyline, again, was more intriguing. Um, and it was harder... But, uh, that's pretty good. I mean, it's nice. pretty good. I'm excited to play the, the new one. Well, the remaster. And Diablo 4. But. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, technically... Actually, I think a sequel that is phenomenal is Wii Sports Resort. Which is a sequel to Wii Sports. Okay. I personally really enjoyed Wii Sports Resort. What I like the dog... strange turn we have taken. I like the dog fighting. The what? The dog fighting? Like this you, man the, said you fly dog fighting? planes? Dog fighting? Oh, plane. You said dog fighting. And that's what it fighting. is. What? It's, it's a yes, dog I fight. know that's what it is. But you said dog fighting, and we said... Hmm. Yes, because they have dog fighting. That's why I was confused. Children's I said, they have that? <laughs> All right. Go in. All right, Neo, go. StarCraft Two Wings Liberty. Amazing, 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 amazing. A lot better than StarCraft, in my opinion. But I never really played StarCraft, so I don't know. I mean, Batman Arkham City. I was just I, about to say I know about that. I talked about in my I top 10 games shorts. of all time. Uh, you guys should go check out that episode. It's a little long, but it's worth it. You need to find out our top 10 games of the past decade, even though we're a year late. Cap. Um, but, I mean, it's a great game and builds a, a lot upon what happened in Batman Arkham Asylum. Like, because I think that's one thing that sequels to do well is they build off the story like they make the events of the first game feel important in the second game that's why mass effect does so good that's why dragon age sort of <laughs> did okay if you take out dragon age 2 that's why halo does good because you open up halo is isn't that the first thing in halo 2 is the arbiters being um mm -hmm. or like having a trial or something. No, he's not the Arbiter yet, but then, yeah, he becomes um, Because, an you know, Master Chief blow up the, uh, <gasps> Halo? Mm-hmm. Ah, see, I know my Halo lore. And then Halo really. 3 starts with Master Chief crashing to, to the ground. So, okay, what, this is a little off topic. What is the difference between Halo 3 and Halo 3 ODST? A lot. ODST has nothing to do with, like, Spartans. It's ODST drop troopers that are like going to protect New Mombasa. So is Halo 3 ODST just a spin-off? Kind of? No, it's the same universe and it's still um, the Covenant in, in are attacking a city and about to glass it. And it's just they're not Spartans. It's it's a more it's it's a bigger focus on like stealth and like planning out your movements than being a giant super tank. Like with like Master Chief, you know, he go running into a bunch of bullet and he like, I don't feel nothing. <laughs> Whereas if you're playing um, 
ODST and you do that, you dead. <laughs> you're gonna die because they're just squishy humans with some Squish. slightly okay armor. And uh, Nathan Fillion's in that, so you should play it. Ah. But, uh, it's, I honestly, Halo 3 ODST is one of my favorite Halo games to go through and replay. Like, if I ever, like, have a long weekend where I'm like, you know what? Yeah. It's like ODST and, um, Reach are my go-tos for story-wise. Like, I love the story of ODST, like, the uncertainty of trying to find your squad again and whatnot. It's, it's interesting. Because it's not, like, a, just a linear storyline where, like, in the Halo, usually, usually with the Halo games, um, Halo 2 is different because you play as Arbiter every now and then. But, uh, you know, you play as, like, Chief all the way through. Or you play as Noble Six all the way through. With ODST, you're bouncing between, like, Rookie, who's trying to put the pieces together of what's going on, and trying to find his squad, and you're bouncing between him and, like, other squad members in their memories that he's finding on, like, their helmets and whatnot. Uh, Jason? Balloons Tower Defense 6. I think I play that more. It is pretty fun. Spent money on it. I mean, Skyrim is technically... Skyrim is so good. When, when Elder Scrolls 6, they dropped a hint about it that was happening, but my goodness, where is, when is it going to happen? Well, no, it's it? a myth. 2029. Like Spoiler just alert, it's just going to be Skyrim remastered. Skyrim <laughs> for your, what, pocket watch? Have you ever heard of the tragedy of Elder Scrolls 6? Mm. Lies. Anyway, have you guys ever played Darksiders? Not yeah, really. I've played a little bit of Darksiders 2. No, I played a little bit of the first one and a little bit of the second one. See, I played through, through the first one and the second one. And I really enjoyed both of them, but I liked the second one more because I liked the game style and I liked the story more because in the first one you are war mm -hmm. and in the second one you're death. Yeah, because he plays the Four Horsemen of yeah. the Apocalypse. And I just, I enjoyed the second one a little bit more. And so when I um, got my computer, I found it on Steam and I bought it. Mm -hmm. And my only caveat is on Steam, like Darksiders 2, if you don't do things correctly, like if you don't like exit out of a menu quick enough, the game will freeze. So I'm like, really? Yeah. That's I'm that. like, this is the best. I think Resident Evil 4 is another good example of building off of your predecessors. While also trying something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I was getting there, thank you. <laughs> While also <laughs> changing things and making it your own. Yeah. Um, one of the things that was the most frustrating about it but made the game even more terrifying than before okay. was you had to stop moving to shoot. You couldn't move and shoot. Yeah. So you had to stop to aim. And it was terrifying because you stopped. Boom. Oh, hey, you're right in my face now. And it's, oh, it's so good. The game's scary. And then they... You need to finish that playthrough. They absolutely dropped the ball with RE5, and... They Five just, and six are poop. They just died with RE6. And then they came back a bit with RE7. Seven was good, and eight And we'll see how curious. it goes. I'm curious about eight, because it's, again, taking what was good about seven, it looks like, and adding new stuff to it, making it a different experience. You know, because mm -hmm. one, two, and three are very similar, and then four was different, and then five and six were <gasps> dog doo doo, no. and then seven was different, way different. Yeah, because it first person, which <laughs> it went back to its horror, like survival horror roots, instead of trying to do that action adventure kind of stuff that five and six did. Mm -hmm. No, like six, even know. zombies. You, I think Leon's campaign is like the only campaign that actually really has zombies in it. Zombies. I think the other three campaigns don't, what? which is a reason people didn't like it and it bombed terribly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are ways to do uh, sequels right, and there are ways to do them wrong. And you should do them right. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Nah, I'm like, uh, uh, The Witcher 3. <laughs> the Witcher 3 FIFA is a phenomenal. And NBA 2K and Madden and MLB looking at you like, no. And NHL. Uh, every sports game, pretty much. You know what we need? We need a comedy sports game. Nobody knows what comedy is except for you. We talked about it once for like 10 seconds how it's the national sport of Bangladesh. Yes, because we're from Bangladesh. Why do you know that? 
Because he watched because an anime that was, there's was a new he's anime. A fan. That's right. There's Never mind. I don't care. I don't care. Burning comedy. Never mind. I don't care. Get back to the really episode. Fun. We need to end it. I mean, I'll end that tack. What? Yep. You are not funny. Anyway. A tack <laughs> on... He's pointing at your tack board. A tack on Titan? A tack on tack board. Yes. Anyway... Video games, The Witcher. Witcher one three. is the best Witcher of all, all of them. I the, that and game I'm just looks... kidding. Witcher one was poo poo. Yeah, Witcher two was better. I never finished. I'll be honest. I just watched a recap of the, vi- oh, of the I game. Because, um, but it, that's another game where like it makes your actions in the in each game feel important to the next one. Because like if you let that Witcher live in two. He comes back in three, and if you don't, he obviously doesn't. You miss out on a quest line. No way. Yeah. And there was no way. There was a way. Oh, yes. Have you ever played the God of War, the original God of War games? Yeah, I played a bit of them. Way different than the last one. Way, way different than the last one. Oh, yeah, those were hack and slash, and the new one was more story that's the, driven that's that is the game style i was thinking of because that's um the game that i just mentioned dark riders yes yeah dark siders but dark siders thank you um the first one's hack and slash the second one's more story driven it's still hack and slashy but it's still fun still uh, fun great uh got anybody else have anything else to add no all right, great. I think we'll end that episode there. Make sure you guys let us know uh, what your favorite video game sequels are, uh, and you know, like what what you like about them. Uh, let us know in the comments or uh, send us a video message on Anchor, and uh, we will. What? See you. Yeah. Yeah. They, they can actually do that. Whoa! Cool. Yeah. Do that, everybody who watches this. And also let us know what other topics you want us to talk about. Um, but thank you guys for listening. Uh, make sure you guys tune into our Twitches. We might be more active over the summer no. than we've been recently. Um, but yeah, tune into our Twitches. They'll be linked in the description or they're on our uh, homepage. And we will talk to you guys next time. Have a good day. Everybody, I love you.